On February 24th, 2022, Russian forces invading Ukraine seized control of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, the site of the world's worst nuclear disaster 36 years prior. Shortly thereafter on the same day, those paying attention to the monitoring systems and sensors around the plant and throughout the 1,000 square mile exclusion zone noticed that the radiation levels were rising. Gamma ray radiation continued to rise the following day, up until many of the sensors either went offline or had their connections disrupted. In the days that followed, these rising radiation rates became another worrying development in an increasingly tragic timeline. What happened at Chernobyl? What do these rates mean? Should these readings be considered, unfortunately, another danger in an already enormously dangerous situation? This video is purely for educational purposes. There is no political point to make, nor are there any insights on the ongoing conflict. I am not a nuclear expert. My only goal here is to dispassionately discuss the new radiation readings at Chernobyl from a scientific perspective, as I see a great need to put out accurate information into the ecosystem. I will be pulling from my own time in Chernobyl, from my personal experience of the radiation levels there, and from my conversations with the heads of the plant itself. I will not be showing or sharing any of their personal information out of concern for their safety, and given that the invasion of Ukraine is tragic, chaotic, and evolving, the accuracy of this video could change at any time. If it does, I will change, add to, or delete this video. For two days after Russian soldiers took control of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant and the surrounding exclusion zone, gamma radiation sensors placed throughout the area went from showing green to red. Even kilometers away from the plant itself, levels were elevated. They were most elevated at the plant itself, with a maximum reading of 93,000 nanosieverts per hour, recorded less than a kilometer away from the failed core of Reactor 4, the sarcophagus, and the giant dome that covered it all. These elevated readings were at least 20 times higher than the levels before the plant was captured, and this is the figure that many news articles used to suggest that some new threat had been added to the conflict. Make no mistake, if the sarcophagus was damaged by fighting in the area, for example, Radiation would indeed become an immediate concern, but as of the recording of this video, these new rates do not indicate that. The sievert, the unit shown in these readings, a derived unit of ionizing radiation dose, is not very intuitive. Because radiation rates can quickly increase by a factor of literally billions depending on what you are measuring, you will regularly see all magnitudes of the unit being used. Which of these should tell you that something is dangerous? A rough approximation you can use is this. A nanosievert is one billionth of one sievert and is harmless. You will receive more than this from just existing on the surface of Earth for 12 hours. A thousandfold increase gets you to a microsievert, and this is also nothing to start worrying about. It's equivalent to having porcelain crowns on your teeth for a year. A million times more ionizing radiation than a nanosievert is a millisievert, and now you should be paying attention. If some source was emitting this every hour, for example, in that hour you'd receive the recommended maximum dose for radiation for an entire year. Unsurprisingly then, a single sievert dose, a thousand times more than the yearly limit, is extremely dangerous. Absorbing one sievert of radiation would lead to radiation sickness and likely death without immediate treatment. With these general values in mind, let's return to the elevated rates at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. As a nuclear technician building a timeline of events pointed out to me, though 93,000 of something does sound bad, consulting our rough guide and converting units, this reading is actually less than 100 microsieverts, which we said was effectively harmless. It would take an hour at this location to give you the equivalent of just a chest x-ray and it's less than a tenth of the value we said you should start worrying about. Comparing even the highest recorded values at Chernobyl during the invasion to 100 millisieverts, a dose that can increase your risk of cancer in the long term, shows that it would take at minimum 45 days and at most over a year for these rates to do real harm to anyone directly near them. Standing in the hottest recently recorded Chernobyl location for an hour is about the same amount of radiation you'd get 
on a flight to Ukraine and back. Trust me, I measured it. The bottom line is this. Despite elevated levels, the increased radiation at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant poses no danger to the public. This is why context really matters and why the difference between absolute and relative risk is so important to understand. Yes, relatively speaking, radiation did increase by a factor of 20 in some locations, but the absolute risk of that radiation was already small meaning that even large increases are still within safe boundaries. According to the International Atomic Energy Agency, even the highest levels measured during this conflict have been seen in the exclusion zone before, in the normal ebb and flow of the irradiated environment. If there is any good news here, it's this. At the time of recording this video, the sensors that recorded the highest readings are back online and back to showing pre-invasion levels of radiation rates that are demonstrably harmless. Here's hoping they stay that way. If Chernobyl's risen rates are not currently a threat, the question remains why they increase in the first place. At the time of recording this video, this remains an open question. The most likely reason for the rates is clearly the invasion itself. Though Chernobyl and the exclusion zone is less immediately dangerous than you think, it is undoubtedly grossly contaminated. The soil, the plants, the concrete of crumbling buildings and sidewalks, decades-old discarded cleanup equipment, the dogs. It's all still giving off radiation. Any significant disturbance of this area, like tanks rolling through wooded areas and the plant's roads, or explosions ripping into structures and topsoil, is necessarily going to distribute radioactive media. No one has a definitive answer yet, but this would make sense especially if heavy fighting or destruction occurred near a place like the waste storage sites HZHTO or ISF-1, which conflicting reports suggest did in fact happen. As for the people and systems of the plant itself, a post-invasion post from the power plant's Facebook page, a letter from the plant's officials, and a message from a plant worker, who will remain anonymous, all say the same thing. Though radiation rates did increase, there is currently no cause for alarm. However, Around 300 people are still being held on site, including CHNPP staff, members of the National Guard of Ukraine, fire brigade staff, medical station staff, and four stalkers of the Chernobyl exclusion zone who asked for shelter. Under Russian occupation, workers at the plant haven't been allowed to rotate shifts. This means CHNPP employees have already started their 16th shift as of the recording of this video, maintaining plant systems under hostile conditions for the last 178 hours straight. Meetings are being held with the Russian occupiers, families of staff are being contacted, and, quote, the CHNPP staff has been demonstrating high spirit and solidarity with each other, as well as huge responsibility for their duties. Luckily, all of them are safe and sound. The plant systems are being operated without any faults. The stock of food is currently enough. This all reads like the Ukrainian stewards of the worst nuclear disaster in history making the best of a terrible situation and not imminent nuclear disaster. There haven't been working reactors at Chernobyl in decades. There is no active power generation to seize, no cores to melt down. If the rising rates at Chernobyl were from disturbed air, soil, and structure, those rates will inevitably settle, and thankfully, that seems to be the case. Of course, this could all change with a single missile, and it will be hard to know if the situation does change with an occupied plant, sensors dropping in and out, and plant workers held hostage. It's all certainly worrying. However, the ongoing threat to the people and property of Ukraine, especially to any of Ukraine's working nuclear reactors, is a much greater worry than a temporary and relatively harmless radiation spike inside a mostly dead nuclear coffin. Right now, the fastest way to a safer Chernobyl is a safer Ukraine. Dunastupinov Razum.